Gentlemen, if a chick breaks up with you, the correct response, no matter what the situation is, doesn't matter what the details are, doesn't matter if you fucked up or she fucked up or nobody fucked up, the correct response is always, okay, that's it. You can be angry, you can be upset, you can be hurt, you can be all kinds of emotions, but the response that you give to a chick when she breaks up with you is okay. Let me explain to you why. So in sales and negotiation psychology, the person who is capable of walking away from the deal holds the most power. That's number one. Number two is know your worth. So there's nothing more unattractive than breaking up with somebody and then them begging to have you back. The worst thing you can do during a breakup if someone is leaving you is be like, oh my God, please don't leave me. I miss you so much. You're the love of my life. I'll never live without you. That shows that you have very little value. And Mm. subconsciously, they will pick up on that and it will just make them not want to be with you more. It will actually reaffirm their decision. So know your worth, know your value. And if somebody doesn't want to be with you, thank them for not wasting any more of your time so that you can go spend your time doing what you want to do or developing something with somebody else. So that's number two. And the third and final reason why the correct response is always okay is a man who has control of his emotions is extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. So two scenarios, chick breaks up with you and you break composure and lose frame and start doing emotional shit. Not going to be very attractive. Opposite scenario. Chick breaks up with you, and you say, you remove yourself for a few days, collect yourself, have a conversation with her, and say, hey, I really like you. I really want to make this work, but I do not want to be with somebody who does not value me. And you've just told me that you don't. I want somebody in my life that does value me. So I think this is the correct move, is to move on from each other. Okay, so I'm going to pause that there. He has some more points, but I'm going to do something different today. We are going to take out the whiteboard. <laughs> I'm going to scoot this back a little bit so you guys can see it better. Because I feel like I need to teach a little bit more in when I'm doing these videos um, so people can actually learn um, these things versus it kind of just being a quick snapshot, snapshot in your mind. It's not really teaching. It's just kind of giving you just a kind of like a basic thing. So we're going to adjust this here because y'all know. I'm not about that editing life. Yes, I know how to edit for anybody who wants to keep telling me you can edit. No, I don't want to. So let me show you what I mean here. Sorry, this is a weird, weird angle. Okay. All right. So the first thing you think he says, uh, if we can get this off. Okay. We got it off. So the first thing he talks about is saying that when a woman breaks up with you, your response needs to be okay. There is no other appropriate response than okay. Um, And you need to understand, no matter what the circumstances are, you have to let somebody go. You cannot hold on to somebody who does not want to be with you. But this is the issue. A lot of times when a woman breaks up with you, whether you're in an argument, whatever is going on, a lot of times it is a shite test, okay? You know, people call it something else, but I want to keep it uh, PG on here as much as I can. So we're going to call it a poop test. Okay. It's a poop test. Okay. So if you don't know what a poop test is, a poop test is basically um, subconsciously women do this. Uh, I know a lot of men think that women do it consciously. And let me, let me do this because I think it's a little blurry for you guys. Um, When a woman does a poop test, And I learned about this. I did not know that that's what this was called. I did not know that this was a thing. I knew I've done it, okay? I'm going to scoot back here so you guys can see me better and get on an angle. So I've known that I've done this before, um, that I've done poop tests, but I didn't know that's what they were called. I didn't know that this was a thing. It is subconsciously built in. Now, I think it's reinforced by movies. How many times do we see in a romantic movie couple breaks up for whatever reason a lot of times it can he it's generally the guy's doing something super crazy 
I mean, just over the top, like goofiness, he messes up and the woman breaks up with him and then he has to fight to get her back or he's, you know, going through hell on earth just to be with this woman again. And so it's that kind of princess fantasy mindset that we're getting from these romantic comedies and fairy tales where a man, if he really wants to be with you, he's going to fight to be with you. So that is where a lot of times this comes from with the breakup. Now, we're going to do a whole teaching in another video about all types of poop tests and what are the correct responses to those poop tests. But for this poop test, when she breaks up with you, okay, she says it's over. Subconsciously, if you know it's not really over, it's just like the heat of the moment. She's frustrated because whatever, something you may have done, something you may not have done, it could be just her own emotions, right? And you guys get into it. Or you guys can just be quiet and she's just like, you know what, I think we need to break up or see other people. I'm not really happy and, and you don't really seem to care about me no more. Listen to the language, especially when she's doing that. But again, that's going to be a different one where you can tell if it's real or if it's just a poop test. So in this poop test, she is subconsciously wanting you, if when she does this, to fight for her. Okay? She wants you to, in this poop test, prove your okay i gotta do this i think you know what let's do this the other way because i'm realizing i'm gonna have to start filming a little bit differently so you guys can see better <laughs> okay all right so we're gonna do it this way all right and then i'll show you guys as soon as i'm done so you say okay but then she's doing a poop test okay it's a poop test it's not real. She's not really breaking up with you. What she's saying is, I want you to prove, prove your commitment. I'm just going to put prove your commit because I don't feel like writing the whole thing. She is looking for you to prove your commitment. Okay. Why does she need you to prove your commitment? All right. She wants you to prove your commitment, to think about your commitment to her for several reasons. One, she could be feeling what? Insecure. I would dare say this is probably the number one reason why a woman would do this. Okay? I think I'm going to have to use like paper, like the paper easel, because you can see the reflection of my light and everything like that. But we're going to get through this today. But she wants, she's feeling insecure. She could be feeling insecure about your commitment to her. She could be feeling insecure about um, your feelings towards her. She could just be feeling insecure about her body. She could be feeling, in, she could just be feeling like she saw um, something on social media, a movie. Honestly, guys, it, read, you know, Think Like a Man or one of these books out here with this advice to kind of manipulate and play with men. And she's trying to see what's up with you. Okay, she wants it. She wants that reassurance. All right. Number two, she wants to see. She wants to test, test masculinity. Masculinity. Okay, your girl can't spell. So there you go. She wants to test your masculinity. What do I mean by that? This is definitely subconscious, okay? Most women don't think of masculine and feminine just like men don't consciously think it. You know it when you see it, you know it when you feel it, but you don't, you don't readily think about, is this masculine, is this feminine? It's just not how people operate. All right, actually, I'm gonna pause this and I'm actually, no, I'm not, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, sorry, this is off the cuff, so this is, a, this is a little crazy the way I'm teaching this. Next time, this will be set up better. But um, so as you can see here, so she wants to test it. So basically when she's testing your masculinity, she's basically trying to find out how, if your response is going to be alpha, if you're going to be in an alpha frame, or if you are going to show, and I'll use a different color right here, because this is a red flag, okay? This is a red flag, guys. I'm gonna show you right now. She wants to see, all right, we're gonna put a red flag here. Who has the upper hand? Okay. 
Whoever is in the weaker position in a relationship, okay? If you're in the weaker position as a man in the relationship, then that for her, that weakens your masculinity because masculine energy leads, it's sure of itself, it's confident, it's not insecure, it knows where it's going, it's not pushed off center by emotions. And so in this test, if you start acting like a, you know, as they say, acting like a bee or acting like a woman, just like, baby, please, begging and all this other stuff, you're doing all that, she now knows she has the upper hand and that you have actually lost quite a bit of points in your masculinity, okay? When you, when she sees that she has the upper hand, okay, in the relationship, that you are not being as masculine, that reduces how she sees your, your masculine frame. Once she loses respect, and that's what that is, this is a loss of respect when she has the, this upper hand, when she plays this game or she's breaking up with you and you start begging and acting all, you know, please and things like that, all the stuff you see in the movies, right? She now knows that she has won. She's got you, okay? Emotionally, you are tied to her to the point that you will lower yourself, that you will lose your masculine frame, that you will behave, you will enter a more feminine frame just in order to keep and please her. Now, this is dangerous, okay? This is very dangerous. And the reason why this is dangerous is because this sets the precedent for the relationship going forward. And whether she realizes she's doing it or not, this right here, this right here, will forever define the rest of the relationship. So, whether you realize it or not, you must stay in your masculine frame. And by saying okay, if you don't know what else to say, this is why okay and walking away is the best response to anything. Because she, has, she now sees that I can't walk all over him. I can't shite test him. I can't just do this. He's going to stay in his masculinity regardless of what I do. Now, I know this is going to sound crazy to you guys because it's just like, well, if I don't beg and if I don't plead and if I don't do, you know, move heaven and earth and show this woman that I want to be with her. And I'm going to take this down because this is like so. And that I'm not showing this woman that I want to be with her in this way. She's just going to leave. She's not going to want to be with me. That is a lie. OK, you beg and give her the upper hand. She knows she can come and go as she wants, no matter what she does. You are she's got you kind of in, in that hook. But what she really wants, the best response, even if she acts mad, even if she screams and cries and act and goes and, and like she doesn't like it. What a woman needs, what goes back to this first one, insecure. A lot of times our emotions, because we're the more emotional of, of, of the sexes, when our emotions are very insecure, when we feel a certain way, we need a rock. We need an anchor. We need something to lasso us back in, to lasso those emotions back in. And if she knows that you're going to be just as emotional as her, begging and crying and acting a fool, a lot of times you'll see a woman actually take on a masculine frame when a man starts acting like that. But if a man stays masculine, okay, we're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to highlight this looking at this, just the mask. <laughs> this is so terrible, guys. I promise it won't look like this next time. But if she if she sees that you stay in that masculine frame, that gives her an anchor, okay? Um, it gives her anchor that she can know that even if she's out of control emotionally, that you are solid, that you are stable, that you are a steady ship, which he talks about right here, which is being um, emotionally in control, all right? And we already know since birth, what are men told? What are boys told? You know, men are actually told, don't cry. Stop acting like a bee. Take it like a man. Who hurts you? You know, you're acting like a sissy, a girl, whatever the terms may be. Where women, we are allowed since birth to cultivate our emotions and to freely express them in any form that they come out. And they are seen as acceptable. No one puts us down for it. No one tells us to control it. No one tries to get a hold of it. So we are trained very early on to be emotionally out of control. And whatever we feel, we're allowed to express and that the world has to deal with it or a man has to deal with it. 
So, so you see how even from early childhood, we are set up with these dynamics where a man is supposed to be more solid, less expressive of his emotions, and a woman is supposed to be more free flowing energy. This is where we get a lot of the energy, the feelings, emotional intelligence, all these words where women like to use because we're allowed to have this scope and range of emotions where a man needs to just stay like a rock, like an anchor. We can be a, a ship just going any with the waves, whatever we want to feel, but that man needs to stay anchored to the ground. All right. So by doing this, by staying on your square, by not engaging in these, this feminine game of emotions, you actually up your masculinity level, okay? You become more masculine in her eyes, especially if this is a situation where you weren't like cheating and, you know, the ridiculous things where they say men are always cheating and all this other stuff, even though it's been shown women cheat just as much. Um, and now we even know um, uh, women are actually, especially young women, are actually having more sex than young men. There are more young men who are virgins than women, um, than young women. So we know that it's not, it's not something like that. It won't even be something catastrophic. It could be just because she's feeling it. If you don't respond that way, every time any little thing happens, she breaks up, you didn't do the dishes, right? This, it will start to increase, okay? So the first time it's just like, oh, baby, it's all right. It's all right, baby. Come on now. Well, you know, we got this together. You know I love you. You know we ain't going nowhere, blah, blah, blah. That is what, you know, that first time it's like, okay, you will start to see poop tests increase over and up. It, it will start to heighten, okay? You're going to get more and more poop tests if you do not respond the very first time the correct way. This is going to set up the dynamics of your relationship. This is going to be the crux of it. And this is why I wanted to explain this in, in greater detail. Now, I, I, there's more I can explain, but I'm going to let him go just finish up this last little part. <clears throat> that will show her that you have self-respect, you have value, you know what you're doing in life. And if she doesn't want to be with you, she can get off the train because your life should be a freight train. Hopefully that helps you guys. So... The another point that he talked about in this thing was how it shows your value, okay? So not only is she insecure, not only is she testing your masculinity, she wants to see what your value is on the marketplace. If you are a man without options, okay, women don't want you. That's just a fact. Women want a man who, who other women want. We know this too. I just did a video where a guy talks about how once he got married, oh, he his ring on, that actually more women came after him. Why? Because there's something called pre-selection in a woman's mind. And especially if that woman's attractive. So if, if you're just a regular guy, you're walking around the mall or whatever like that by yourself, you may get some women, you may not, whatever. But let's just say you go to that mall with Naomi Campbell, all right? And that's your girl. And you look like... I don't know, one of these rappers that, I mean, that a lot of them look, I mean, let's, let's be honest, they look a hot mess. If they weren't rappers, they wouldn't get nobody. But let's just say you are a, um, you're walking around with Naomi Campbell. What do you think that does to other women? Where they're just like, before they would see you, but now that you, you, you have now, Naomi Campbell has just, and I say Naomi Campbell because I think she's like one of the most beautiful women in the world. Okay, young, old, whatever, it doesn't matter, that woman is stunning. So you're with her, and it says to other women, wow, if he pulled her, he must really got it together. He must, uh, something about him. You are now pre-selected. Women will be drawn to you just off of that alone. So the same thing happens, you don't have to be married or, or in a relationship with Naomi Campbell, but any woman, if she's attractive, Women feel like that is a pre-selection. Okay, if he's in a relationship, that means he's probably not a dog. He's probably not running around. He pro he's commitment-minded. He's um, probably a good man, he, especially if you're holding her hand or anything like that. Or if you have a ring on, say you're by yourself and have a ring on, that shows you're a commitment kind of man. That some other woman has you. Okay, some other woman has pre-selected you. And between, you know, the cattiness and women wanting to beat out another woman by taking her man, 
That could be one thing. But the other thing is, it's just like, you know, it's hard to find a guy, this, that, and the other. So it's easier for me to take another woman's man who was committed already than to try to go get my own. So if she feels like you don't have options, other women don't want you, she don't want you either. She will, your value decreases when you start, um, when you start getting into this, okay? When you, when, when she's now, that's once again, reaching into this upper hand and she almost gets disgusted that the fact that uh, nobody wants him but me, I don't really have a good man or like, you know, she's thinking, you know what, there's, there's better options out there. There's better options out there. But when you act like a man and you are a man, it says, you know, it knows your worth. You know you have value. You know that, you know what? I know what I bring to the table. I know what kind of man I am. And you, you walk around like that and you have this belief system in yourself. And if you don't feel it right now, fake it, okay, until you make it. That confidence in a relationship when a woman is like, all right. And when, when the man's like, all right, she's just like, wow, that ups your value. This is the way he described it in a business in a business transaction. Okay? Whoever's willing to walk away from the table. See, she was threatening it, and it was most likely a false threat. And again, we're we're premising this with a false threat. If it's a false threat, you have to be willing, okay? When this happens, is to show and demonstrate your value and walk away. And leave that situation, leave that relationship. And what you will find that if you respond in this way, and I know, like I said, I don't play these games. Why can't women be mature? No, listen, men play games too. Believe it or not, a lot of men don't realize they actually poop test as well. Not as much as women, but men have their things too. But we're just talking about helping you navigate women. And women, if you're seeing this, you may for the first time realize that, wow, I did not realize that this is what's going on in my mind when this is happening. Because um, I know for me, it's been uh, subconscious when I, if I've ever done that. I mean, this is when I was back dating years ago. So, you know, but I, you don't know these things. No one teaches us these things. This should be a course study in school. Like we need to be learning about uh, finance, business, and relationships in school. And, you know, as young children, because this will help us um, form better relationships and better lives. But if you do walk away, this is very important. You must keep you, whatever, if she says, if you, if she breaks something, you say, okay, you have to do it. You have to mean it. It may hurt. It may feel a certain way. The only way, okay, if she stops and says, no, 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 please don't leave. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You do not stay by that initial um, begging that she does. If she's begging you initially, cause, no, no, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. I was just mad. I was just whatever. Mm -mm. You don't accept it. You need a cooling off period, all right? You need a cooling off period. She needs to know that you are no longer together. I mean changing your relationship status. I mean the full thing, okay? You are broken up. And in order for her to get back with you, it's not going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because then that becomes a cat and mouse game that she can entrap you into as well. All right. And over time, you get worn out by this. So you just finally just like, all right, I know you don't mean it, whatever. Never respond like that. You take it as a serious threat. You take it as though she means it because you want to help when when women's emotions are high. A lot of times we can be irrational with things. Men can too, but I, every woman knows that we are more emotional. It's, you know, period. That's what it is. And so she knows that if she is, it, when her emotions, whenever she's feeling some type of way, she can lash out, say what she wants to say, break up with you, and all she has to do is quickly apologize and things are back to normal, okay? And over time, that will continue to ratchet up. You have to demonstrate, because a lot of times we say things we don't mean. Everyone says things they don't mean. But in particular, in the heat of the moment, when emotions are high, you say things you don't mean. Or when you're shite testing or poop testing. So you want to make sure that those, whatever words you say to me, they have meaning. They have meaning. They mean, they may not mean something to you. So what you're doing is you're forcing accountability to those words. And I'm going to put that on here because that's the key to this right here. All right. I'm going to erase that because I don't have a ton of room no more. And this is kind of, it's a little, you know, I'm a little, it's a little ratchet, but we're going to, we're going to make it work. But <clears throat> the key to... For us as women, 
Our emotions all our lives have had no accountability. No one makes us discipline them. I mean, very small ways, but not in general. This is women are allowed to have emotions, feel what they feel, and there's no issues with it. I think I'm going to have to flip it back this way to make this work. So you want to force that in those emotions. Okay? These emotions need to have account to ability. If I'm spelling things wrong, y'all, just know it is what it is. <laughs> accountability. How do you, how do emotions get accountability? I'm trying to fix that camera. How do emotions get accountability? All right, and I'm going to put this in red. Consequences. Okay? Consequences are the only way, okay, that we learn how to check our emotions. Again, what did we say? When you were young, as a young man, if you had an emotional outburst, if you cried or whatever it is, you were quickly checked most times. You were told, stop acting like a beast, stop acting like a woman, stop this, that, and the other, right? We have not had those types of consequences. Your peers, your parents, your coaches, okay? Just general in life, you would face consequences. We as women, for the most part, do not, all right? So, you want to make sure that those consequences are held and that for you guys to get back together, if that is something you choose to do, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but if you choose to get back together, there has to, she has to, the way that you teach a person or set boundaries, okay? When I say consequences, it's not that like you're punishing her. These are natural consequences. You have to do what's best for you. So you're not punishing anybody, you're setting boundaries and you're teaching a person how to treat you and how to respect you. But this is how a man will get respect in a relationship when out of control emotions meet accountability, they give birth to consequences, okay? And so you want to be have that measure of accountability with her and once you do that, your respect level increases. She knows if you guys do get back together, all right, she is going to have to prove to you now that she, that she is deserving of you, that, she, that you are going to give her another chance. And what does that mean? If you do give her another chance, you have established boundaries already by holding her accountable. Now she's living with those consequences. You didn't make the consequences. You're just holding her accountable, and you're setting up, like, I think I need to put this on her accountability, Okay should go coincide with, all right, boundaries, all right? That's how you hold someone accountable, emotions accountable. You set up boundaries. You set up boundaries. You're not going to just take it. You're not going to just accept this type of treatment because somebody feels something. You have feelings too, just because you're not, you're not allowed to express them like she is, but you, are, you have feelings just as much as she does. Okay, you have just had to learn over time to set up boundaries. You have been held accountable and you had to hold up boundaries. When you're around your boys, you couldn't just start crying about because you lost Madden, the Madden game, like, or whatever. You lost a basketball game. You weren't allowed to just start raging and fighting. And there's some men who are out of control. Generally, their emotions come out in anger and fighting. Okay, those are men who have no emotional control, or they, maybe they were just pushed to that edge. Uh, a couple times, but a man who's who acts like that generally he he does not he does not hold himself accountable and has had no one to hold him accountable and therefore he has no boundaries. But in general, men do. So when you set those boundaries, say okay, if you don't want to be with me, that's fine. Say la vie. You hold your mask in the frame, and whatever you're feeling, this is why men need therapy as well. This is very important because if you're feeling a certain way. You need to get therapy so that you can work through whatever you are feeling or whatever you're going through that you can't really freely express to just anybody. Or a lot of times people don't really know what to say. All right. But what you want to do is you want to establish it. And once she knows that this boundary is set, if she comes back, okay, things change in the relationship. It's not going to be the old relationship that you knew. So once you, you, you say, okay, 
you set it off and she's trying to come back to you, you keep those boundaries held up for a while. Okay. I would actually say, I would say, uh, the minimum would be two, three weeks. All right. You want to give it some time to establish that. So she, you really know that she's just not, I would even say a month. And the reason why is because you, a lot of times, maybe she is feeling like, maybe she is kind of wanting to, you know, uh, have a hot girl summon or she's feeling that way. You want to make sure that she actually really wants to be with you and she's not just doing it because she's familiar with you and she's scared to get back out there and whatever that. You want to know that she actually wants to be with you, not just, you know, uh, you're just a placeholder till she could find something better, right? You want to get her back in that street, let her get back on those apps so she can see if that, that's what she wants to do, then go do your thing. But if you know she is still knocking on your door, okay, after some time has passed and you've established these boundaries, right, that she really wants to be with you. Now, this is the time for you to lead the relationship and to take it to the next level in terms of now, you know, having it on your term, more on your terms, that there will be no more of these tests that you guys, in order to be back in a relationship with me now, because the, the con one of the consequences, okay, is either losing you. So that's one consequence, losing you. All right. The second consequence now is you lead. Okay. And you have rules now that you can put out there based on her behavior and say, you know what, in order for us to be back together again, there's rules now. All right. So this gives you an opportunity to say, you know what, in this house, and when you, if you break up with me again, if you say those words again, we are done. That's rule number one. We are done. Either you work through our problem, we work through our problems as mature adults or we're done. I don't have time for these games. I know. And don't never say, I know my value. I know my worth. That sounds kind of corny. It's like um, Tyrion, Tywin Lannister says, any man who says I have to be, I am the king is no true king. You don't say those actual words, but you say, listen, listen, for this to work out, things got to change. And these are the things that need to happen. And honestly, I, I want to do a whole teaching on why I think people should have relationship contracts. Um, they don't have to be legally binding, but what they are is if you violate this, my, my, my moral code, if you violate, violate my boundaries, this is what's going to happen. More, more often we go into relationship with just feelings and be in this, that, and the other. And then we, we have similar hobbies and we're this, that, and the other. But when it hits the fan, when the poop hits the fan, okay, you, there's no, there's just like, well, I didn't know you didn't like that. I didn't know that. And this is why I believe monthly couples should be, they should have something and they should have a time, even this is 30 minutes where they talk about maybe issues or things that, you know what, I thought, I thought, um, what she can bring up at that time, you know what, I really feel like I would love it if you could help me, you know, do the dishes more. Maybe we could set up a schedule where I do dishes on Tuesdays, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and or whatever. You guys start setting up rules and things which you don't like. Or maybe you see she has like a male friend, right? That she's spending time with and you say, listen, I, I just, I, I thought I could handle that. I don't like that. I, you're going to have to let that go. Is our relationship grow? That's not going to work for me. So this is the time for both of you to set up those types of things and to restart the relationship under these new rules with, with actual guidance, okay? With something that has boundaries now. So I thought this was interesting. Um, I plan to do more teaching now. I, I, reactions are one thing, but I feel like those are kind of a dime a dozen. But I feel that there are things that we all can learn about relationships, just even from these TikToks. There's principles that can help us grow and to really... Um, and to really change because so so often you see on YouTube the problem is pointed out or the criticisms are highlighted or this is the issue or women are this way or men are this way. But no one's actually teaching fundamental. And that's a no one. There are people. I, I take that back. But I will say it is not the most known thing where I, I haven't seen that many people actually taking these things and actually breaking them down and how we can do better. It's one thing to see a problem. It's another thing to have practical and applicable, um, and applicable steps in order to get to that place. 
So, because a lot of times it's just talk. We feel these lofty feelings. We're agreeing with the Amen Choir. But the reality is a lot of us have not been taught many of these things. So let me know in the comments if you like this type of video. And I'll see you in the next one.